So we're going to go all the way back to freaking season zero. Our very, very first game when there were like a handful of us, mostly staff on site. The first time we met, everyone. Yes, the word in sincerity doesn't fix. What's that? The word in sincerity doesn't fix. Come on in. Have we started? What you did that I was going to start early. I didn't know that. Oh, come on in. I, I haven't said anything important yet. Oh, good. Right. Just choose your spots to start. Thank you. Hi, Andy. I'm not going to pay it off. <laughs> You're good. It's a full of class I've gotten. So, 107 AR. And AR stands for After the Retreat of the Tiberians. You want to know the story of the Tiberians? Look on the website. Ask another player. Um, I'm, I'm here to talk about the impact, the, the heroes on Britannia. So, once upon a time, we had the Torn Treaty, which happened in the springtime. Sitting with our, the first event, so our very first game was the Torn Treaty. It's a little short because we were cut off by a tornado. <laughs> we had to leave. Um, but the Merlin facilitated a meeting between Queen Eleuthera of Ceredain and King Uther of Albion. So on the surface, it was to talk about a military alliance against the newly aggressive Fomorians. It was also part of Uther's bid to become Pendragon. If the elves backed him, the other nations would probably fall in line. So this was the first gathering of heroes. The Merlin convinced King Uther to send invitations to specific people, even those outside of his banner houses. So Costain was invited, even though Costain at that time wasn't part of King Uther's plans. Everybody's together, meeting at the Golden Phoenix for the first time. Fomorian shamans forced the way gates near the meeting site open, which everyone had assumed at that point was dormant. Surprise! That magic doorway at the end of the field is now open, and there are Fomorian pouring through. Oh, great. <laughs> Attack the gathering. Heroes fought off the Fomorians and managed to close the way gates with the help of Prince Regent Faravang. In the confusion of the Fomorian attack, Queen Eleuthera and King Uther disappeared. So King Uther is one <laughs> Find a place. Sit down. I know I said it a little bit early. Treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche. <laughs> there might be a couple of other things. I know. I think Jerry was going to try to make it. Jared was there at the very first event, so he knows the story by heart. Jared was? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Jared and Stacy and a handful of others were at the very first event. They weren't playing their same characters. They they brought in, we had uh, pre generated characters that we, we had staff created to be used to the new system. Um, and they, they played some of those pre-gen characters. Um, Malone and Rianar were both were pre-gen uh -huh. that became yes, they were. season, weren't they? Uh, I think Leiden was, was also one. Leiden was? Gallus was too. Yeah, Gallus was. Yeah, a, a handful of our veteran players were <laughs> pre-gen. I don't think so. No. Ask, ask Blue to be sure, but I know some of it, that's how some of our veterans became veterans. We, we created these characters, like, all right, this one seems all right. I'll keep this one. <laughs> Here, revamp it a little bit. <laughs> Change names. So in the confusion of the Fomorian attack, Queen Eleuthera and King Uther disappear. The Golden Phoenix Tavern burns to the ground. Lady Zai and Farrowin are killed. So surprise, the ladies of the Golden Phoenix can be killed, and that's how we learned that very first event. Wait, they died the first time? Uh-huh. Fomorians attacked and burned the Phoenix to the ground. Oh, great. Yeah. No burning popcorn. So our next event is called the Forlorn <coughs> Fortress, and it happened over the summer. This is one of our first events at 80 Acres, which is the site we use now. <coughs> Prince Madoc Ambrosius, heir to King Uther, is declared regent while his father is missing. Saradane invaded Albion under the command of Kethriel, second in command to Prince Faravain. House Valerius lands, since House Valerius' lands abut to uh, Saradane, were occupied by Gildar forces. The castle of Valerius was conquered by his assault <coughs> force. Lady Marcia Valerius, M A C I A, Marcia, I didn't pronounce her Marcia because you know, that would be difficult, was killed, and that's how Lord Marcus Valerius ascended to the seat of House Valerius Lord. Heroes cannot approach Castle Valerius without being detected. A fairy named Anwen, everybody's favorite, appears and offered them a deal. 
If the heroes retrieve a sword in something else for him, he will obscure the heroes with magic so they can infiltrate past the Valerius, past the Jaildar, outside the walls. <laughs> heroes attack a party of Fomorians carrying a magic sword, the commander, the Fomorians carrying the, the magic sword, and deliver said sword to Anwen. The heroes also <coughs> rescue a woman from slavers, intent on selling her, and deliver the woman to Anwen. So now Anwen, a fae, has not only a magical sword, but also a woman that the heroes delivered. Heroes defeat the Nexus Guardian of Castle Valerius and repair the, repel, easy for me to say, the Jaildar from Albion lands. We have our next event, the Broken Blade in Autumn. Lord Donovan Blackwood, King Luther's Field Marshal, best friend, Lion PC's husband, goes missing. He was supposed to head up north to a meeting with Prince Madoc, never made it. <coughs> so the heroes are sent at Prince Madoc's order to rescue Lord Blackwood or to recover his corpse. After rescuing a fey touch courier from Jeldar agents, heroes recover and decipher prisoner transfer orders. <coughs> Thinking that, oh my god, this is Lord Blackwood, they go and meet and find instead King Uther, who has lost an eye by torture, thanks to Kethriel. Prince Faravain's inner circle have rebelled against him as regent and begun attacking and kidnapping other Jaldar. Same time. Yes, sir. So, this time all the Jaldar. Elven, Jaldar. Well, Jaldar. and Elves. Serenade Elves were <coughs> against Albion? They weren't against Albion. At this point, Serenade had been established as very xenophobic and very insular. They didn't want anything to do with anyone who wasn't their specific type of elf. This was the first time anyone had been in any type of contact with an elf since the Torn Treaty, which resulted in the disappearance of Queen Alifera. What about the other elves? Who have been Rendang? People have had. Okay, so not these, with not interactions with these elves. Yeah, it was the, specifically the Seridine elves, these not the, the Rendang elves. Wood elves. Yes, okay. the Jeldar, the Wood Elves. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Can you pronounce Jeldar? No, just pronounce Jeldar. So then, he has his eye removed. Heroes rescue him, and that's when we find out that they've been attacked. That the Jeldar have been uh, attacking and kidnapping others. Other of their, their, their kind. So the heroes are then sent by the Merlin <coughs> to the Athenaeum to retrieve something of import for her. The heroes recover, decipher the dragon prophecy telling of the treasures of Britannus and the prophecy of the Chosen One. And the very first hero dies and is resurrected on the battlefield in over 800 years. You'll have to dig around and find out who that hero was if you want to. If you don't want to know what hero was, who was it? So, sorry, the heroes went without the dragon prophecy uh -huh. and a separate prophecy? And, yeah, or recovered. The prophecy no, the know? dragon prophecy tells of the treasures of Britannus and the chosen one. So the dragon one covers two okay. topics. And if I need to slow down, please tell me. Yeah, okay. I will gladly slow down. This is a lot of information. This is five yeah, years of information. Yeah. I'm going I'm to try. Um, I, I've had other people ask if I can make this document public. I think okay. staff is okay with it. Um, so if you miss something, I'll see what I can do. Um, I have it saved, so we can be sneaky about it if we need to. Okay. <laughs> I might save some finger strength. This is being recorded, right? We're videoing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This I this, I I have my my laptop on. We'll, we'll, yeah. So you don't have to. Be so now it's just story time. <laughs> it will be on a, it will be on a YouTube playlist with all the other classes. Yeah, and Angel's going to help us with that. Thank you, by the way. So then we have our very first EC Perry. We had so few people in attendance, we actually had it at someone's house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was the first appearance of Lord Marcus Valerius, who hosted the feast. So those of you who know Amdross, this is the first time he was on stage as uh, Lord Valerius. Lady Blackwood, me was on stage for the first time, and this is where I went to King Uther in front of the heroes and said, my husband's missing, the 
house is leaderless. This is my house, and I'm going to take it. Here's my oath to you. Exactly. And the king went, okay. And Lady Blackwood ascended to the head of House Blackwood. She is awesome. Damn right. <laughs> and this was the first time we met Duke Gorlois and Duchess of Grain of Kernow. You'll hear stories of the Duchess of Grain getting impatient and stabbing a table with a knife. That happened. So they take King Uther's measure and by the end of the night bend the knee to him and are elevated to Duke and Duchess of Albion, which is the first time that there were those titles used in Albion. Really, really pissed <coughs> off Lord Marcus and Lady Ginevra Blackwood. Because all of a sudden these newcomers come, she stabbed the table, she was supposed to have a freaking weapon, and now she's above me, excuse you. So that caused political ripples. Prince Faravain crashed the feast, stole some of the hero's cake, which the victory cake, you did, don't even. <laughs> <laughs> they offered you food and hospitality, so I took the victory cake. <laughs> yes, sir. Is this on the movie? I don't think so. Um... He crashed the feast, declared King Uther's maiming was not his doing. Because we, at this point, we didn't know who had him. We know the Morians had him. We didn't know. Because Prince Faravain had disappeared at this point. We didn't know who had him. Prince Faravain goes, this was none of my doing. Lady Blackwood looked at him and said, what have you done with my husband? Also not of my doing. And that's where we establish that the elves cannot lie. Not will not. Cannot. And, in the absence of his aunt, the queen... Alethera finished signing the treaty that was interrupted by the Camorian death. Remember, we're always going to have lies and the elves don't have to tell the whole truth. Absolutely. They can tell you the truth. But, yeah, but they don't have to tell you nothing but the truth and the whole truth. Those are different. So. They have to answer your questions. <coughs> uh -huh. So then, in exchange for peace with Saravain, the heroes agree to address the spore elves, as, we were, as they were called at that time, led by Kethriel, that are now plaguing Jelva. And that leads us to Season 1, 108 AR. And this first event of Season 1 was called Princes in the Tree. We had two, miss two missions as heroes. We had to look up, try, try to find Princess Winifred of Logris and the first treasure of Britannus. And they divided into two groups to accomplish both goals. <coughs> On their way to rescue Princess Winifred, was played with great aplomb by Cat, uh, Cat Carolyn. Heroes were attacked by vicious fey-like creatures called redcaps and ended up rescuing a mission with details about their contact. They make their way to the meeting and run into Anwen. Yay! The princess they had been sent to rescue is the same slave woman they had handed over to Anwen last year. That's why you make sure you say this. Anwen sends the heroes into Siluria for the first time facing the undead necromancers to retrieve the key to Winifred's magical slave collar. The heroes then take Princess Winifred to meet her mystery betrothed, foiling a kidnapping attack by Orkney agents en route. And they end up delivering her <coughs> to Prince Madoc, who takes Winifred back to his castle at Drakenhold. Then they run, the heroes come back, and run into Liliana, the crazy cat lady hermit priestess of rain. I played her. And learn how to travel to Saradane. This is where the first time the heroes got the rules for walking in the way gates. For those of you who are new, the heroes will tell you if you use the way gates, there are rules that you have to follow to be in this space. This is this is sacred of rain, our goddess of death and, pro and prophecy. Thank you. Uh, and this is where they learned those rules for the first time. They faced enter caps and the spirits of the dead. The heroes made their way into Saradane for the first time. So this is the first time that this xenophobic and closed off community had anybody other than elves in it. They dig up a giant crystal from the base of a tree, the Stone of Gwenwyn, the first recovered treasure of Britannus. And this is also the first time the Spore Elves are on site. This is the first time the heroes see these corrupted elves. The Stone of Gwenwyn, G-W-E-N-W-Y-N. Is this public knowledge what it does? I think it's on the list. I think that's one of the things that Rhiannon got. Okay. I don't. I don't have it in my notes, but I'm sure you can ask somebody and see if they know. Okay. So then our some, next. Some event. of the treasures we know what they do, and some we don't. Yes, sir. How many treasures are there? Heroes. There are twenty-four. Well, there are twelve gods and twelve men. Yeah, twelve good and twelve. We've got some of them. How many of those? Oh, 
Well, Eight. retrieved or retrieved <laughs> and lost or destroyed. <laughs> yeah. A couple of them. Yeah. This is, a, this is a conversation you should have in character. Yeah. yeah. Ask somebody the story of the treasure and see what you get. Turns out a mission that destroyed two of them. They were bad ones, though. Oh, as far as we're going to tell you about it. But it probably depends. It probably depends on who you talk to, like, for what, what story, story you get. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Some of those are really good. <laughs> yep. So we all could use a couple of those. <laughs> yes. Some good ones. Treasures. So, uh -huh. next event, and then for season one, is called Foundations. The heroes are, re are directed then to refound the village of Cornerstone. They face off against slavers, bandits, and the forces of a renegade Costain lieutenant by the name of Theobald Arn. They rescue and free the townsfolk who were subjugated by the slavers and set ward to the Skraelings out of town. And that's where we get Cornerstone's motto. Cornerstone, still uneaten since 108 AR. Many spirits are bound to the area interact with the heroes and end up slaying several of those heroes but write their own names in the Book of the Dead in order to escape and make it to the other world. Which ones wrote the names in the Book of the Dead? The heroes or the spirits? The spirits. The spirits killed the heroes, but wrote their own names in the Book of the Dead. So the spirits wrote their names in the place of the heroes to take their places and go to the other world. Yeah, that's not very funny, well, but I didn't uh. that. I'm doing the human jokes today. <laughs> the next event is Five Crowns. The heroes receive a desperate plea for help from Duke Elaine Branroy of Kurnow, as his forces are overrun by the undead. Heroes encounter a spirit near Cornerstone by the name of Gwendolyn, who helps them build a portal to Siluria. Among a field of zombies, a demon is summoned in Siluria, and the heroes slay it. Duke Elaine Brandroy's heir is rescued and taken in by King Luther. And the heroes make a bargain with another fae for a magical rescue book. Stop making bargains with hero guys. With pharaohs? With fae. Whatever. <laughs> heroes. Stop, Stop it, guys. Stop making bargains with fae. <laughs> anyone, anyone who has any fae lore also says that repeatedly. Guys, no. So then our next event was the Harvest of Heroes. This is when the first time the Merlin is on site. So even though her name is brought up, and the Merlin in our game is a title, for those of you who are new, so um, the... Kind of like James Bond, multiple people have heard of <coughs> When was the first time she was on? Did she try to guess her name before it didn't exist? Oh, that's right. The place was the first time. And then you see Perry. So this is the second time that the Merlin are. Thank you. For the first Great Council, with the first of the Great Council of Heroes, which is the house that she is over. The heroes travel to Fae and meet up with a Fae in white named Winter, whom I also play. And the land of the Fae is called Fae, not Fairy. I mean, is it? It's just called Fae, or is it called can, a number of things? It's called a number of things. Okay. I mean, if they get really upset about it, they'll tell you. Sure. Okay. Um, but Winter takes them into Fairy, takes them into Fae, and they meet up with Winter's handmaiden, who teaches them the rules of Fairy. What does Fae spell? Winter's her name. No, oh, yeah, handmaiden. Uh, I don't think she has, she's got a name. The treasures that we they retrieved from Fairy was the basket of a Luned, E L U N E D. And this is where we have our second winter feast, which we call Frostbite. And when crashed the party, because people brought cold iron into Fay. Oh no. Not cold iron. <laughs> yeah, mark that down. That's important. <laughs> that, that's important. Does, does like salt and sugar work the same as the legend too? Uh, okay. You, you can try, see what happens. Can you wait till I'm around? I don't see that. <laughs> Anwen crashed the party and froze the king and his noble guests and nearly killed the emissary from Benway. And several heroes were then cursed by Anwen. You were, Lady Caitlin was, Gaulus was. That, I, Gallus wasn't. I thought he was. That's how I got because he's cursed. Gallus? Gallus oh, yeah. is cursed, but not from that. He's cursed from Dido. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Why well, I appeared in the Tome of Dreams. Mm -hmm. So that was our winner's feast. Are you sure you're the one who should be telling us? <laughs> Would you like to come up and do it? Well, she seems uh, to be knowing more than we do. Someone she's also playing. I have other things to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> Season 2, 109 AR. Very first event was called Blood on the Stone. 
Heroes traveled to Innes Whitern, the Fomorian occupied Holy Isle of both the White Court and the Three Sisters. Sorry, Blood on the Stone? Blood on the Stone, yes. On the stone. Yeah, like I said, you need me to slow down when you know. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Good? I, I got to the part where said Three Sisters. Yeah, okay. Innes Whitern, Fomorian occupied Holy Isle of both the White Court and the Three Sisters. And Innes is spelled Y N S because of course it is. And Whitern is W Y T R I N. Give us a roll sheet of spell assessment. Absolutely, W is a vowel. The heroes retrieve a treasure called the Ward of Crixus, and learn a cleansing ritual for the White Court. How would you spell Crixus? Crixus is C R I X U S. Yeah. That's yeah. one of them. Yes, um, that's the, the important one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when, <laughs> when is, <laughs> when, is uh, when was he named Warden? That comes later. Oh, that hasn't happened yet. Mm -mm. Okay. He wasn't he wasn't Warden yet. There okay. we go. Okay. Wow. Okay. I know what it is. I'm writing things and I'm spelling it wrong. So. Your notes all there. <laughs> <laughs> Heroes learn secrets from a, a reaper. Is a, a emissary of rain, and several sign the Book of the Dead for the first time. So actually, heroes are killed, and heroes put their own names in the Book of the Dead, including Lady Caitlin Corvus. Yes, she was of House Blackwood, slain by the Reaper. Does anyone else have a vote? Uh, Innes and Dwyer of Clan Numnani, slain by undead while trying to enter the Vault of Rain. And at that same event, Crowley of Clan Dimnoni turned a Fomorian ritual back on its casters and used blood magic to slay the majority of the Fomorian shamans. I haven't really seen Crowley since. Was that the same one with Sibelia? Did she Sibia. do the same? No. Sibia Sibia the same Sibia's was caused by something different. But it's basically the same. It, it, it's, I thought it, it was the same, same event. Route, it was but, a different event? Uh, maybe. I, I mean, a different I it occurrence? Was a different event. Yeah. Ask Sibia. Okay. You, you can tell her you've heard this thing about Crowley. How did yours happen? Cassandra, Sophia's dead. <laughs> True. So then the heroes encounter the first of the metallic ladies. They, they, they encounter a golden lady and speak to her. <laughs> speak to her. <laughs> She's super pretty and she likes you. She's super pretty, sure. <laughs> so our next event then is called the Dogs of War. Dwarven clan Fellblade emissaries arrive in Cornerstone, telling of Theobald Arn's renegades overtaking the fortress of Falholm. Did you have a question? Fomorians use the Waygate then to assault the Three Sisters Temple dedication. Super classy, guys. The Golden Lady leads the Fomorians using blood magic to turn the heroes against their allies. Ehod Capstein of House Ambrosia sacrificed himself to save Cornerstone. Those of you who have heard Story of Ehod, that's how Ehod died. If you haven't asked somebody about the story of Ehod. Kieran Kuznets of House Ambrosius dies defending Cornerstone from the Fomorian assault. And Rengar of House Costain slain fighting a Fomorian champion while defending the Three Sisters Temple. We had a lot of players die in these two events. And we discover something that we call a dog of how Fomorians create battle lines that actually buff them as they fight. So that all happened at that event. So the next event was called Dark Doorways. Yes, sir? Archaeological battle lines? The, the, the dog is what they call the uh, ability, the, 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 the fizz rep of the <coughs> thing that allows them to buff while they're in battle lines. Oh, okay. All right. I was that. No, I, that wasn't well written. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is called Dark Doorways. <laughs> Arn's forces Both continue to plague Cornerstone. Silurian's forces push northward toward Cornerstone. So we're being attacked by both Theobald Arn and Silurian. So Richard Sky of Clive, Scum of Clive, whatever. They're bad people. <laughs> we don't like them. And we have our first long walk. Yes, sir. The Silurians are a type of elf? No, that's Saradane. Oh, 
Okay. Because we, we need to make this more confusing. Yeah, it's easy to confuse. So Serodines are elves. Silurians are humans. They're a whole nation. Okay. Up to the, I think they're like the north east of the east. Okay. Silurian? Silurian. I think it's down south. Yeah. Okay. Southeast yeah, is Siluria, south. and then southwest is Serodine. They actually are, like, yeah, they're really It's been a while since I've looked at the map. Andy knows. So, yeah, I, I just... I just did some work on Benway, so, so that's why you would know. So the Salarians are necromancers. They're they're not good people. And the part of the Torn Treaty was Faravain and elves fighting, being the buffer between uh, Uther's lands and Salaria. Yeah, so that's where the elves, the good elves, came in. Were they the ones being held hostage by the evil magic of the kingdom? Yes. I think I was reading something about that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. The okay. And so they mentioned Kernel earlier too. Yeah, yeah. So you got Siluria, Kernel, Benwick, Saradine. Okay. Or all, and that's like the southern okay. southern part of the continent. Southern swath of the continent. Yeah. So there's a wretched hybrid sound. That's what I was trying to say. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't Orkney? It's yes. another one. We've got more. Orkney's Orkney. in the north. This is the southern one. Okay. This is one south of the sister country of okay. it's, like, it's like Vegas Orkney. and Reno. Yeah, got it. Depends on who you ask. Yeah. Orkney. <laughs> According to the Justicar, it's Orkney. So uh, we run what we call the Long Walk, which is our uh, in-game death role play. So we have four heroes take the Long Walk. Caitlin and Kieran returned, but are changed. Ehad and Rengar do not return. Yes, sir. Caitlin was the pregnant one earlier. Yes. Okay. I heard she gave birth to the first child of Blackwood, and her name is uh, Gwen Death Victor. Because Caitlin was pregnant, like physically pregnant during this time. Like very, very, very pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> so she she came, she returned, and her baby returned with her. Did she return before? There was a baby born before or after she returned. After. So she, she died with the baby, and she and the baby came back. It really is. And, uh, so, so five heroes went along. Technically, yes. <laughs> the baby hadn't made the wrong choice yet. Yeah, we don't know if the baby, the baby swam. Yeah. <laughs> the baby making it back from the long walk was the Somebody needs choice. to play that <laughs> baby next. next Somebody needs to be uh, okay. Somebody needs to be Gwen Death. That would be an awesome. And not, Angelina did a beautiful job playing that. Okay. I, I I play the psychopomp, the the guide of souls, Liliana, and we're talking at the the long walk, and they're they're doing all their, their stuff that they need to do. Which, as you die, and if you choose to go on the long walk, you'll see this. <laughs> but she's sitting there, and she's rocking while she's waiting, <laughs> and she's singing to the baby because she doesn't know if she'll get a chance to do it later. During the this is all under pri pr uh, price of peace. This part of it, this is the the, the subsection called the Battle of Fellholm. Um, here to back to the past and to the fall of Valengard. They changed the past by recovering a treasure called the Black Chalice and bring it forth into the present time. Nessia of House Aliandar takes the long walk and returns. <laughs> and the, the next event for season three is called Fall of Action. And this is the last stand of the Golden Phoenix. The Fomorians are using the ways to move troops. They have invaded the realm of death. And they are using passageways in Irene's realm to move troops. Fomorians chase heroes through the ways and attack the Golden Phoenix Tower. Something triggers a magical effect. And the heroes are transported en masse back hundreds of years into the bodies of their past incarnations. Then, just in time to watch Tiberians assault the last remnant of the heroes in the past desolation cycle. Some thing, some water, did you know? What's that? Some thing, some water, did you know? That made that effect happen? Yeah. That's a mystery in game. We don't know. Something. That's why I said something. something. Yeah. We don't know. That it's also, also referred to as Mudfest. <laughs> oh yeah, this is also called Mudfest. Oh yeah. yeah, it was that was a nasty march, and there was I mean, put mud the consistency of pudding. Yeah, everywhere. There was no solid no this, solid ground, no dry spots. It was, was kind of awesome. So gross. <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was a wolf. Yep. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, 
So then the heroes are all slain by the Tiberians, <laughs> and the Golden Phoenix falls. Save one. Save one. And that one spreads the story of the last stand. History is then changed, and the stories of heroes are not crushed by the Tiberians. So then our heroes, during this, all, while all of this is going on, the next thing they do is they attend high tea in the fairy court of stars. Um, real quick, I want to emphasize that because that character survived, the timeline changed, um, that, and it affected different characters differently. Mm -hmm. So, if you hear character, if you hear players trying to figure out what the what past they're talking about, it's because that's an in-game thing that happened. So. So then, the heroes then, you know, they, some are at high tea, some of them go to the Undying, the clan of Fae Touched, who occupy a valley on the orkney Leoness border, and discover that Leanna has beaten them to the Lantern Treasure. We good? Yes, yeah, sorry. sorry. Um, no, it's fine. Repeat what you just said, because I was... Okay, so heroes and clan of the Undying, clan of Fae Touched, who occupy a valley on the orkney Leoness border, and discover that Leanna has beaten them to the Lantern is one of the treasures. Is it? That's all it all matches? Yeah. Okay. So then our next event, speaking of which, is the true, it's called Truth and Betrayal. This was a campaign day. And those of you who are new, campaign days are one day events. Most of these are weekend events that we're talking about. Is this Warhead? Um, that, no. Okay. That comes later. That's Albion Goes to War. Okay. This is one of our campaign days. Is this, was this the first campaign day yeah, or had you done it before? Day. I think this was the first one. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was. I think so. Mm -hmm. So then, House Morgan, of their own volition, initiates negotiations with Fomorian leadership. Oh, yeah. House Eliandar travels to Logris. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm really excited, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that is not what happened. According to the king, it is. Yeah, we're going to House Aliandar travels to Logris and searches a Tiberian hero hunter's tomb. That's an epic story. Most of these are. That's true. So then House Ambrosius retrieves a crystal forge from the haunted depths of the fortress of Felhome, because of course it's haunted, and make a demon slaying weapon. Clan Dumnoni then meets their clan fairy and instigates an insurgency against Kring Riordan McGregor of Cambria. You're welcome. Did I hear you correctly? Clan fairy? Huh? Yep. Each clan has each concept. Cornerstone has its own fae. Clan Dumnoni has their own fae. They're it's part of how fairy works. They met their fae. Okay, so they met their fae and... Okay. And instigate an insurgency against King Riordan McGregor of Cambria. Uh, was no, the, Caroline, the, 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 Caroline played, yeah, Caroline played the Doom Nomi play. Oh. Allison was an elven ancestor, I think. She did that at that yeah, event, I believe, the, but it was, hunter, it was not what we did as the Yeah, movie. something like that. She, Allison did play a fairy at that That, was, at the, that was on the Blackwood mod. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I didn't know, I, I've been on these events, I just didn't know they had names. <laughs> like, yeah, I was there. I, I did this thing. Are we caught up? Can I move on? Yes. Okay. House Costain decided to go back to Innis Whitron to avenge themselves on the Fomorian champion who kidnapped Duchess of Grain and caused the death of Duke Gorlores. So then the Great Council, everybody just kind of went different directions. The Great Council enters the Clan Dalriada vault and retrieves a tome of hero lore. House Blackwood goes to Saradin. No, Shannon. This is all happening at the same event? Yes. Okay. So they're about one day super pet on. Yeah, we, we divided it in half, and we had like yeah. four houses in the first half of the event. We broke for lunch, and then everybody who played the first half played NPCs for the second half, and vice versa, and the other four did their thing in the afternoon. It was a big thing. Oh, my God. And we kept things separate, so... The people that were Team Monster for the first half were like over on this side of camp, and the heroes were on that side, and, the, and then like we switched no so that we couldn't talk. Yeah. Until the end of the day. 
Okay. So we yeah. couldn't talk until the end of the day. So yeah. we didn't know what was happening. Or this was this was intense. It was really cool. Oh, so, Blackwood. Blackwood. So uh, then House Blackwood goes to Serenade and gathers information and proof of the experimentation on the Spore Elves and hands everything over to House Eliandar. <laughs> so that was the end of that event. Menka. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Five years of freaking plot. If you have questions, ask my wife. She probably oh, she probably yeah, she probably has it written down somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So then the next event was called All That Glitters. Uh, an event. This was an event. Okay. Um, there was a, an interlude. There was an interlude in between. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just. Well, yeah, this is this is the staff compiled the like, major plot points. There's always more that we're. I'm not telling you every single thing. Uh, the, the interlude was largely <laughs> planning, I believe. Like everyone get together and let's figure out what we're gonna do next time. No, no, no. That was actually my my first event was the. Interlude. Was the interlude after no, that? Yeah, the, no, actually, I was there for the Morgan mm -hmm. event. Yeah. And then the interlude afterwards was probably something between. Yeah. Or was it? No, you, you probably were. And like I said, this is just the major because we cannot remember every single thing that's happened in five years. Oh, come on. We've slept since then. Well, they have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> also, that. Ask for research. You know. Yeah. <laughs> probably. So then, all that glitters, the Great Council heroes rescued a councilman from Leoness in the middle of the Orkney Leonesian conflict. At this same time, Clan Dumnoni infiltrates a guarded vault of Queen Leanna of Orkney and empties it of treasure, which is capital T. That was how they found Tealox Lance. T E A R L A C H. I'm not going to spell it. You got that. House Aliandar travels to Saradine's capital to the Aliandar vault and kills Kathriel, ex lieutenant, best friend of Faravain. Husband to Nessia, who is the self-proclaimed leader of the Spore Elves. It's all right, Your Highness, we got this. The heroes of the White Court travel to Logris to retrieve information that might help purge a demon from one of their fellow heroes. Yeah, White Court went to Logris. This was to help cleanse Sabia. We haven't seen Crowley in a while. We don't know where he is. At a game, he's doing awesome musical teaching stuff, but in game, we don't know where he is. <laughs> Heroes also go to Malagant and retrieve a treasure called the Spindle and rescue Queen Elaine. Had a couple of them that, uh, that might have been one of them. No, that was that one was really funny because that was the, guy, the guy kept screaming out uh, plus five and something to Orkney, and then I would hit them with it because it's from Orkney. They were really <laughs> vague about that. Yeah. The first couple times I did that to the guy screaming, he was really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so then Albion goes to war. This was another one of our campaign days. Blackwood and Aliandar both travel to the depths of Saradane and find the Black Oak, which is very important to House Blackwood, and slay the second of the corrupted Runefar, the Enhelathari. Clan Dumnoni summons their Fae again, heads to Cambria, and frees McGregor's prison camps. <laughs> and continues where we go. House Ambrosius leads to the rescue Prince Ban of Benwick. Prince Ban is pulled from the clutches of Malagant, and Cassius is slain by a demon. <laughs> Shannon played the demon. She was glorious. Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Council leads a mission to Leoness to negotiate with Clan Dalriata and Clan Iceni heroes to begin to make alliances with the Undine. And this mission is the foundation of the Broken Clans Alliance. If you want to know more about that, ask the brain player. Or Iceni. Yeah. And uh, she knows. She knows. <laughs> she knows. And between this event, we had another uh, role play only, and Cassius took the long walk and made it back. Ladies, there's more than enough for you both pretty. You're both going to the 
<laughs> so between this event and another one, we had a role play only, and Cassius went on the long walk and returned. Then we had Ways of War. House Blackwood, a former ritual to free Lord Donovan from Silurian control. Lord Donovan, for those of you who don't know, was turned into a death knight. He was a big badass. King Uther's right hand man, right hand military hand, disappeared. His soul was taken by the Silurians. He became an undead death knight. And he came into town. Those of you who know Josh Palmer, all what, six foot three of him, he comes into town wearing all black with this glowing eyed mask. It was fantastic. Always beautifully done. And Lady Blackwood hadn't seen her husband in what, three, four years? The first time she laid eyes on him, she the, left. The, uh, yeah. the uh, Tundra Turner was lost her shit. I was a bit about it. Yeah. I was very professional about it. I was crying on the inside and on the outside some. <laughs> so Lord Blackwood comes into town and Lady Blackwood divorced him and released him from his house of house of one of his house members. The dwarves go on a mission to return a lost relic to a hero of the Great Council. And discover more than they bargained for. Bum, bum, bum. As the dwarf. We also had two heroes that uh, show up out of the days. <laughs> they may not tell you, but you can ask them. So then. Was that day? The two heroes that showed up, and then they, they thought they were gone like 11 days in the late, and they're like, what? It's been three years. <laughs> oh, oh, that was. No. Uh, the sergeant. Guys. The sergeants, yeah. 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 Airstand. Airstand and Morristan. Yeah. She's like, what do you do? It's been like 11 days. Yeah. yeah. Tops. <laughs> wow, this was, was different. <laughs> it's grown so. So then heroes go in, into Benwick, and Maligant uses the attack on the Benwick royal castle as a means to force Benwick into free to, absorpt, to complete absorption into Maligant. Mistakes were made. Uh, Maligant uh, found out. That was funny as hell. So uh, now Benwick doesn't yeah. exist. It is what it is now. Benwick is now a province of Malagan. Is, is it public knowledge what the resistance is doing? The resistance in Benwick? That's something I'm looking for in character, but I didn't know if that was a... Do some research. Over. I don't okay. know if that's, that's public knowledge. Okay. I've got a pen named Raven, so I, I don't want to yeah, give anything keep, away. Keep, keep, so. Don't even ask. So we're going to go. And Kevin's like, yeah, pretty much. He's going to leave out the back door. Bye. Thanks for warning you were coming, heroes. Bye. So, Sevilla, who has been possessed by a demon, we mentioned earlier, heroes united to cleanse one of their own. A Camry weird caster named Sevilla from the demonic taint she acquired back at the docks of war. So, there was another demon in Cornerstone. You know, that's a thing. What do the demons do? Well, I so, mean, Sabia, do they have loyalties to any of the different factions or things, or are they just there for? Chaos. That's a good question. Oh, do we know? It chaos. depends on the flavor. Okay. As of right now, they're chaos. Like, there's no such thing as a Blackwood demon. There is none. That we know of. Oh, oh yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Might be Tyrol, we don't know. <laughs> Probably Tyrol. <laughs> and we don't know. Tyrol goes like, Pink Pay and Dina, neither one are good. Tyrol's <laughs> 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 had Tyrol's had relations so we, we determined that you know we have these events um, in, in autumn and that's one of the feast days of rain which if you take Caroline's religion class she'll talk about um, things come in through rain's windows Purnell's character was one of them um, people have been pulling things through rain window that you shouldn't and a general rule is we don't because <laughs> they're dead don't, don't touch that it's dead so then we have our Winter's Feast, which was this last event that we just had uh, in January. Igraine emerges from her sickbed of ten months as Queen Igraine, married to King Uther and now the co-monarch of Albion. Did we skip the King Shadow? There's a lot that, that has happened, yes. Were they married while she was in the sickbed? No, just after, after she got better. Okay. There was a, a, a all the, the, um, Nobles were late coming to the feast because it was like, oh yeah, by the way, we're getting married in five minutes. You should be there. Oh well, all right then. There are there are political reasons for the for the haste. So talk to a player. Yeah. I'll tell you. That's your kid. 
uh, al yeah. allegiances. <laughs> Um, bastardy is not a huge thing in Britannus. There's, there, it's not a, it's not a uh, social stigma as it is here. Did you know? There are a lot of things that are not a social stigma from medieval times. Okay. Yeah, that that's part that's of what sets Britannus feudalism different from the, the real world. Religions don't fight. I right. like it. Okay. Yeah, it's um, pretty awesome. There are very few gender different like role differences. Yeah, one one. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you missed my class. You should take that. Class. What's that? Britannus one one. I wanted to do I that. Can do the yes. Okay. So then, um, at this winter's feast, heroes declare the treasures and the virtues of the ones they have, of the chosen one, to Merlin, locking in the pieces needed to generate the ritual of summoning, which they got back as part of the, uh, they got the dragon ritual. They, you know, they, they've very been, been putting all these pieces together to figure out what they need to do to create, who in real world is called King Arthur, but we don't know yet if Chosen one's going to be a, a girl or a boy. So, you know, King Arthur could be just as easily Queen Aoife. We haven't decided yet. Gerard of House Costain completes his lady's challenge, returns King Uther's sword, and is now knighted as Sir Gerard Bastone Costain. Kali Yacht is the first Camry to receive a lady's challenge. Uh, Queen Elaine of Benwick judged it, however, incomplete, and it still continues. Baldwin of House Ambrosius is given his lady's challenge. Bring back proof of the crimes of Leanna of Orkney. The sister of King Uther, for those of you who don't know. Gollus okay, of House here. Blackwood. Was Kill a Bitch part of it? Uh, if she's actually behind something else, someone does have a role. Awesome. Thank you. Gollus of House Blackwood is given his lady's challenge. Recover King Uther's missing eye from the Anhill Authority and revenge the king's injury. We have note that the eye is intact. Magic. And Tyrol, a member of excellent standing of House Blackwood, is given his lady's challenge. Solve the mystery of the murder of King Connor of Leoness. King Connor was supposedly murdered by Lady Blackwood's father which necessitated Lady Blackwood being really quickly married off to a noble in Albion to keep everything in, intact. Lady Blackwood's convinced her husband, or her, excuse me, her father is innocent. Tyrol has been sent to see what's going on. That's his lady's challenge. Aurelia, the first light of Lyriel, and Julia Croisnock, the Archbishop, yes. Don't forget, I got a writ from the king for that lady's challenge that if I find out who did it, I have the right to kill them. Yeah. I'm hoping Leanna <laughs> <laughs> so do the Iceni. Yeah. So does almost everyone. Yeah. The, there's no bitterness. This is she is bad, and the lady who plays her is tiny. And she's <laughs> so <laughs> sweet, but she plays evil so beautifully. No, it's um, Charlene. Yeah, sorry, Charlene Savage. Oh, she yeah, she plays Leanna. She's awesome. Great too. So she's like that. She's like Umbridge. Umbridge evil. Like, oh. I think it'd be sweet. I think it'd be so cute. <laughs> Perfect. So, the first line of Lyriel, uh, Aurelia Valerius, and uh, Archbishop Julia Kreuznach come out and tell of happenings with Rufus and the void vote of non confidence is trying to be forced through by the people of Malagant. And this also leads to this event, leads to the creation of the Queen's Guard to protect Igraine and the Chosen One, which she has just been declared fit to bear. This is also the fall of House Morgan by uh, King Uther ordering the death of Anton Morgan because his house colluded with the Fomorians without his knowledge or permission. And there's the creation of the Dwarven clan Cornerstone, which leads us to season four to be determined. Dun, 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 dun. So any questions you have regarding this, anything that we've missed out, ask your fellow players. Everybody here likes to talk about their stories and all the badass things that they did. Talk about it in game. That's it. You've got um, more than I was new, expecting because there's a lot of crap. For new players, a huge theme of, of this last season was the chosen one ritual. So we had to, we had to match treasures up with virtues and just and depend on which treasures we used depended changed. Like what, where we put them decides uh, decides what that chosen one will become. Like 
will they be justice or will they be um, humility? Like, what's going to be their what's going to be their big thing? We had to put the treasures in each category to determine like love, right. hate, nemesis. And so there's a I mean there's a lot you can have really cool conversations in character about. I just wanted to know that that was a thing that was a big a big deal. Yeah. Is it public knowledge which virtues were chosen? Yes. yes. Um, Ask the heroes who yeah. are part of it. It, it wasn't a secret. It happened in front of everybody. Yeah, literally, there was a big meeting in, in the middle of the room, and there was declaiming and role playing, and they decided which was what, and, and what kind of person the chosen one would end up being. And we had players in the meantime test to become wardens of Cornerstone. Well, that was the, the interlude. Yeah, that was the interlude. That's what we won. That's where we rested at. So, when did? The first word. Um, you know? Oh gosh, that was one of our outdoor uh, warm events. Yeah, it was. It was the summer event. It was the one after Ehod's sacrifice. It was the one where Ehod died. Let me find that. Ehod died in Dogs of War. So after Dogs of War was when Malone was. Yeah, so it was the summer event of one of many. So after Warden. Hey, Shannon, you want to explain what a warden is since you are one? Um. Sure. Uh, the warden, well, the first warden um, is, is uh, like, I don't know how this works. Um, they pretty much guide the heroes. They train the heroes. Um, so, like, Malone is, is the warden. He was the first warden. Our, unfortunately, the player moved to Colorado, so he was kind of a goofy and won't be around as much. So it's like John Elso, the hero's buddy. Kind of. Similar, except he's a hero, too. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be like a Buffy retired and then trained yes. the uh, yeah. the new slayers. Okay. 